Well, do you like what you see? Do you like those blooms? Well, I do too. You've probably seen them a few times in some of the artists that work in resin. And I'm going to show you just how to get those in your pieces too. Stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe by hitting the button. Hi everybody, it's Janet and I'm going to be doing another one of my resin projects. I have a birch panel here that I have spray painted black. It's uh, done with a Rust-Oleum uh, two times coverage. I sprayed the sides and I also sprayed the back because it's wood and that seals the wood and protects it from absorbing any moisture in the air that could potentially create warping of my board. Um, it was kiln dried, so it's, it's nice um, at this point, but I wanna keep it nice. So that's what I do. I, because I have my sides sprayed, I'm going to be going for a clean side um, I did the black to try to make this a dramatic piece. So I'm going to have clean sides. I'm going to be using my um, tape that I always use. This is the 3M. It's the um, Scotch Blue Painter's Tape um, Advanced, which is supposed to be like easy removal. And I put that on to protect the sides. I'm going to do a, uh, I'll show you that process, but I'm going to do it in time lapse so that it goes really quick. But I apply that and um, it gives me good results when I remove it. I very, very rarely have to do any cleanup. So I, I it, this stuff is pretty inexpensive as far as tapes go that we use in epoxy resins, but uh, that's my go-to tape there. And I'm also going to be testing another one of the epoxy resin stores resins. This is their Woodcrafters epoxy resin. This one is a little bit thicker. I don't know if you guys can see that bubble in there moving, but it moves slower. Um, so I'm going to be also making this one because I'm going to do the clean sides. I'm also going to do in layers and um, I'm going to be building a dam edge on my board and I'm going to test this one out. We have the part A, part B. It's a one-to-one -one ratio so it's easy to know how to mix. And I wanted to show you guys, these are brand new bottles. So this one, because of shipping, you know, it's a little sucked in. So let's, uh, let me show you what I do. I create my own horse spout. So I take my X-Acto knife and I come in here at the edge and I just create a little opening that makes a nice little pour spout. Yeah, I know. I'm well, trying to make it so you guys can see without my big fat hands getting in the way. And I don't know that I did that, but anyway, so I hope you can see that. Right? It's a triangular cut. And then when you pour, you have to also have a spot that will release the air into the container as you pour. So this gives me a little bit more control rather than the big opening. I mean, sometimes the big opening is what you want, but especially when a bottle is brand new, it can tend to all of a sudden come out really fast. So that's my tip for the day. My little pearl that I like to put in my videos. So. That's the one for today is, uh, I might throw some other ones in, but you know, we'll have to see how the whole thing goes. Anyway, that's where I'm gonna start and uh, try out this resin and see how it goes. And uh, yeah, I, I like experimenting and that's how I, I learn. 
is through my experimentations and I encourage everybody to experiment. So give it a go, see what happens. See that one, I just pulled the thing right off. Make sure you have your gloves on, guys. Look, I even got the resin on my X-Acto knife there. So having uh, nitro gloves, I can't tell you enough, you know, protect yourselves because uh, everybody's chemistry is different and everything, you know, you got to be careful. That's all I can say. Be careful. So I've got my bottles open and I'm going to tape that up and let's get going. Oh, I just remembered something I want to, because I was doing it and I turned off the camera, but I turned you back on. And black cap in this one, it's going to be for part B. So make sure you remember white cap part A. Make sure you remember which one goes for which. And if you want to get crazy and not have to think about it, that helps. Label it. You know, you could always double check yourself, but when you're in the middle of a pour, you want to pick up your caps and put them back on. Normally, I, you know, take the cap off, pour it, put the cap right back on, and don't touch the other one yet. So, uh, anyhow label helps so I'm going to do this in time-lapse I'm putting down my first layer of tape I like to do that at the lower edge and then I go back and I line up carefully along the top edge of my board I find that doing it in this manner the resin that I don't want to be on my sides will then flow past that top layer of tape and it really keeps it nice and tight the the tape does flex a little bit so be careful and rub that down in and you'll get a nice seal on there now i'm going to go around it one more time and i'm going to be building a dam edge it's about a half inch up and again rubbing it in, burnishing, it sticks. Okay, there's the board ready to go. So it took, you know, three times around with the tape and uh, got it setting off the tabletop. I propped it up with, uh, those are some pretty good size yogurt cups, but uh, yeah, I wanted it to be nice and steady. You can see the sheen from the gloss enamel spray paint on there. And there's my dam edge. It's about, mm, I don't know, probably not quite half an inch. Um, and I went really careful at the corners because that can be your weak spot. So take your time on the corners. And remember, this tape does like twist and flex a little bit. So watch that you're running straight. All right, and start at the bottom edge because my tape is not wide enough to cover the edge in one sweep, nor do I want it to. It actually gives me a little bit more security if I use one that doesn't cover completely because then I do good coverage at the bottom edge and uh, this actually rolls around, see? I let it go around the edge on the back. So anything that I spill, you know, it goes, it's not going to make my back edge look messy. It keeps that clean. But I've got, that's the first one I put on. Then I do my one here. This one is as level as I can possibly get it to the top edge of the board. And then... I use my Sharpie edge, you know, the side of my Sharpie 
and I burnish it by rubbing it and warming it up, the tape adheres better. And then I cover it that final time with my dam because this is what's going to keep the resin on top. Remember I said I'm going to do one in layers this time. So I'm going to show you guys that process. It's kind of like what I do with my geodes, but uh, I've got some ideas. Stay tuned. All right, so I'm getting myself set up. I wanted to show you that I use a digital thermometer to make sure that my room temperature is good because it's winter time here in the northeast, northeast. So that's where I want my temperature here. And the other thing I wanted to show you guys, uh, I don't know if uh, any of you know about this. But uh, I have a, this is my old iPhone, and iPhone in their utilities has a compass. And one of the other things, if you swipe, has a level option. So you can see as I tilt it, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on my board. And when the screen goes green, I know my board is level. And that's how you can check your board. Pretty cool, right? So that's a good deal. Anyway, so we're uh, set to go. I have uh, my colors picked out. I'm going to use my Flow Art Resin Liquid Pigment. This is the amazing, brilliant colors. And this is the white. And um, I used it the last time I poured. And I have to tell you, it was the brightest white I've ever used. I loved it. So you might want to think about that. I'm also going to use their black because it's a really intense black and I'm going to want that in some areas. I've got some glitter here, black glitter. I'm going to throw that in there. Uh, I picked out, this is reflect or uh, sorry, recollections from, uh, I got this from Michaels and that's a, pretty pink um, glitter. I'm going to throw that in there. I'm going to be using Artie Sue's metallic pigment. This is a silver. It's a really nice bright silver. So I like paste pigments and this is a paste pigment. And again, one of my favorites. I've had that for a long time. And I'm also going to use Black Diamonds Lux Violet. Now this one, um, let's see if I can show you on the camera here. Use that. And I know you guys know, well, if you watch me, you know, but I make test puddles. So here's my test puzzle. Pu can't talk today, sorry. <laughs> uh, this is my test puddle from Black Diamonds Lux Violet and it probably doesn't look really impressive there but when I put it on top of black and again this is why I like to make my puddles so that I can play around there's my black for sorry black for the flow art resin and my black diamond Lux and I stack them on top because this one's very transparent. Hopefully you can see like that. You can see maybe a little bit transparency there. Um, so I'm going to be getting a really cool effect when I put it on top. And I think they'll work well together. And I've got some, this is a, Pearl X. This is their Micro Pearl number 650. 
I'm going to possibly throw that in somewhere and possibly Pearl X silver. This is a very dark silver. Um, it's number 663. Um, and that might go in, but we'll see how it goes. And again, I'm going to be doing this one in layers. So we're going to start the first layer. I'm going to measure out my resin. I'll get it all tinted up and we'll get this project going. I'm using the Epoxy Resin Stores Woodcrafters Table and Bar Top Resin. My first time using it and I enjoyed it a lot. It worked well. I'm going to be putting a code in on the description box, so go ahead and use that if you're interested in purchasing some. And safety first, putting on my full face mask respirator. All right, so just like I said in the beginning, this piece is going to be done in layers. I'm speeding this first layer up pretty fast. It's pretty basic if you've been pouring with resin. This is an 18 by 24 inch board and I batched up 20 ounces of resin. I then tinted it and just kind of started pouring it around wherever I wanted to and tilting the board. I wanted to make sure that everything was covered first with this first layer. I'm going in with the pop stick there, making sure I'm getting everything up right up to that tape dam I put on. And then I'm going to come back in and I'm going to add on some of that black diamond uh, Lux Violet. And it really looks great. It, my lighting is not the best in my studio, but I have to tell you, I was really pleased with how it looks in there. It's a real nice effect. So heating it up, torching it, and we're all set to go for adding another layer here. Right then, one hour later, I come back to my studio and I start removing the tape. The resin is still slightly moving and I'm pulling the tape in a downward motion that's going to help give it a rolled over edge. And I'm also going to go around the entire piece with my torch real fast just to help around that edge. It looks real pretty after that. All right, three hours later, and I'm ready to start working on the second layer. It is very firm, but not completely cured, and it's a perfect time for me to put on another layer. Here are the colors that I'm going to be using, and I'll have them all in the description, so check there if you want to do anything with these. And I'm just going to let these go through really fast because I'm just putting on pretty much a transparent layer. I mixed up the acrylic inks, the quinacridone, magenta, the white, and the gray to come up with that pale pink combination. And it's very transparent. I also put the glitter into some clear glitter. That's not what I meant to say. I put the glitter <laughs> into clear resin and put that on there and then I also used my hand to spread clear resin all around. Let's get to it. I'm gonna put down a puddle of the clear and it's still in a plastic cup but it's okay. I'm gonna lay out that puddle and then I come in with my paper cup so I have a little bit more control with these. This is the Flow Art Resin White Pigment and I'm just going to put a little puddle of that in the center of the clear. And then I'm going to top it off with my combination of the pink Liquitex inks. Then I'm going to heat it up with the heat gun. And as it warms up, I'm going to swirl in a circle and blow it out wide. Then I'm going to come back in with my torch. And I'm going to give it a little bit of intense heat and it spreads it out. So again, another puddle with the clear. Now remember, the entire panel 
has been coated in fluid resin so it's not going on to a cured spot so where I put in that pink that transparent pink you can see the clear is pushing into that then I'm going to come back this is the Artie Sue Silver and I did add just a couple of drops of 99% alcohol into only the silver. All right, and we're going to top it off with a little bit of that pink combination. Again, this is the Liquitex acrylic ink into the resin. It's a combination of the quinacridone magenta, the titanium white, and the neutral gray from Liquitex acrylic inks. I'm going to heat it up with my Wagner heat gun. You can see how I spin it and it blows it out and out into a wider circle. And then I come back with the torch, put a little bit of intense heat on there. Now you can see I got a little bit of smoke there. I'm pretty much going to keep following this process. One of the things I want to mention at this point is I'm pretty much been working with this resin for 30 minutes. So you can see that the consistency is getting pretty thick. Now, I still got a long way to go, but it's really starting to get thick. And that actually works to control how much you're going to be applying. So it's important to know that. And it's also a good idea to change the different ways that you layer your colors in. Like I said, that silver has 99% alcohol added to it. So when you're putting it on top of another color, it's going to react slightly differently. Or if you're putting it at the bottom, it's going to work a little bit differently. But putting them in layers in these little puddles, that's where you get the effects combining nicely. Let's move over to another spot on the panel. Again, pouring out that clear puddle. That's going to help allow it to move more. It's kind of, I, I even like how it distributes the clear and, and creates this window into the transparent layer that I added. Now remember, the last one that I just did, I put the pink down first. Now this time, I'm putting the silver down first. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to put a small dot of the pink on top. And again, it, the technique is to come in close, heat it up right in the center, and then you're going to blow it out in a ring like that. Really nice swirls. And then the torch, it, it does that last minute intense heat that distributes it out. So I'm just moving around on the panel, finding spots where I want to build into this second layer. And I'm going to continue, like I said, doing my process. Puddle of clear, puddle of color. Now here I'm going to be adding the white. And again, this is the Flow Art uh, Resin Pigment and it's a very bright white. You can see in that puddle how bright it is. It's, it's just beautiful. And then the pink on top, again, this is the Liquitex acrylic ink. So it's a little bit different type of pigment. And I want to just give it a little shot of that silver on top. Now, because I'm using my torch a lot and my heat gun a lot in this process, I definitely recommend a window being open, a fan in the window. You want to get that smoke out. Making these is just so much fun. You never know how they're going to turn out. Each one is slightly different. Layering and building the colors on top. Each one has its own characteristics, its own personality, if you will. And a lot of smoke and fire. The last bloom that I just showed you, I had done a little bit of time lapse on that to get it to go faster. But this one I want to show you, you can see that the resin is really starting to slow down. Again, I've been working with it at this point for about 40 minutes. It's still very workable, but 
it's changing the way it's reacting as I'm laying these down. So it's a timing thing too. You don't want it to go really fast. If you work with it doing this technique when your fluid resin, I should say, is very fluid early on, you're not going to get the same results. It's going to be a little different. And again, having these different types of pigments is what really helps to have them interact and create different things. So you can see again, that one, wow, looks so good on that white. All right, and over here, I'm going to do by beginning with the black. Now, I made a little bit of a boo-boo there. I didn't put down my clear puddle. So I just poured the black right down, and then I'm going to add my layer. Again, this is the silver with the 99% alcohol added to it. And it's moving really slowly, but check this one out. Look at that. I think that looks pretty good. Again, a little bit different, really pretty. So I always show you guys the good and the bad. In this spot, I was putting down my clear. The clear seems to be flowing just fine, but when I had batched up this little pot of black, Look at this. It, for some reason, it just kicked and went to goop on me. <laughs> I was like, what the heck? It is a small little amount in that cup, but for whatever reason, it decided to kick in that cup and it turned into a big black blob. So trying to move it using this technique, you can see it's like, you know, that black is just basically sitting there. The, the silver was flowing fine, but the black, uh-uh, it did not want to play. So that's bad. Well, good news for me is I still had some clear, and I put a little bit more of the clear into another cup, and I mixed up another pot of black. So you're going to see how much nicer this one comes out. It's slow, but it's not coming off as a big blob. I've been working for probably 50 minutes now with this resin, and it's still working great. So let's build out this bloom. Again, we did the clear. I put the fresh black on there, topping it off with that silver. And let's get that heat gun down in there. You can see I get pretty close. If you heat it up quick, let it kind of settle. Check out those edges. That looks great. I like this one a lot. And then the torch really helps with getting the lacing and that darn smoke. Watch out. Again, I'm just moving to areas on the board where I want to create some interest, see how my color combinations show up against the background. That's why this one is done in layers, because you're really using that clear, and those create the windows through the lacing, and you want to have something beneath it that is going to be visually there to support what you've got going on on the top. Um, and again, I'm using the heat gun. It's pretty much sitting on the tabletop standing and staying, you know, running the whole time. That is really making the room warm. I believe when I got done working on this piece, doing this technique, my room temperature had gotten up to 78 degrees. Now, you want to watch your temperatures. If it gets too hot, that's really going to be a problem. But there was a lot of smoke getting created. My smoke detector, actually, I, I had it sitting on the floor because I knew I was going to be making some smoke. Now, I have fire extinguishers right next to my art table. Again, when I'm using the torch and I know I'm going to heat it up to the temperatures where it actually 
will cause a, a quick flame. I'm going to keep any kind of safety precaution close by. That's a pretty one, don't you think? Be careful. I'm going to speed this one up a little bit. Again, it's still the same process, but you can see I'm doing this one pretty close to that last one I did with the black. And you're going to notice that when I start using the heat gun and the torch, it's going to push and take away that round shape from the black one. Okay, let's heat it up. Blow it out and around. And you can see it's starting to push into its neighbor there, the black one that I just finished up. But that's okay. Don't want everything always perfectly round, right? Now, don't be thinking that my resin is flowing better. I'm just speeding up the camera. It's been almost an hour, just short of an hour that I've been working with the resin. So it's really starting to get very slow. This is the puddle that I had done where the black that I batched up went to gel really fast on me. So it's bothering me. I'm coming back to the spot. I have warmed up my resin in the cup. I took the heat gun and I warmed it up in its cup. And that's going to let it move a little bit more. So we'll get that down there. You can see it poured out pretty good. This is a, a regular speed film. But this silver boy, look at how thick that is. And usually when you put an alcohol drops into a resin, it's going to make it more fluid. Um, it'll just, you know, create different reactions, but it also helps to keep it a little bit more fluid. This pink, boy, hours later it was still movable. I shouldn't say hours later. An hour later it was still movable. Now that's a little better. I like that. So I'm trying to cover up that spot. There you go. Blow it out. Torch it. A lot of smoke. Okay, the resin is pretty much at the end of its life as far as me using it to get any kind of effects. I'm trying to tweak this spot. This is my this is my tortured area on the board. I just I'm trying to compensate for that first black puddle that I put down that was gel and I keep trying to tweak at it, but the resin is it's done. It doesn't want to work for me anymore. Like I said, it's been at this point, it's been an hour. That's a pretty long time to be working with resin. Now, I pulled a few tricks that I have by warming it up in its cup. But when you're doing that, it actually, once you warm it up, then it's going to shorten its life even more. So you can see I keep trying to use my heat, use the heat gun, use the torch, use the heat gun, use the torch. I go back and forth. But it's pretty much done. So I'm just trying to fuss with it, get it as best as I can, but it's pretty much done. I just can't seem to leave this little puddle alone. By heating it up and torching on it, it smoked for quite a while once I turned everything off. I kept watching it and standing guard until it was completely done. But it's it. It's done. Let's look at what I got. It's the next day and everything is cured and here are the results. Tilting the board, I got some nice swirls in there and you can see these blooms, how they turned out. There's some really nice combinations in there, some nice edges. The glitter really shows up good, gives a nice 
backdrop for some of these spots. I hope you enjoyed my tutorial and this new technique for some of you. Like I said, you've probably seen it a few times by other resin artists and I wanted to share how you too can have these in your pieces. So thanks so much for watching. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe and I'll see you next time here on Mooncusser Art.